Hi friends, welcome back to my channel, Testing Mini Bytes. I am your friend Amudan Chakivel. In this video, we are going to see how we can manage test data with the help of fixture factor. Again, managing test data is one of the complex things in a test automation framework. If we can handle this in a much cleaner way, your test, your framework, and everything will looks very clean. So we will, uh, we are, we have already an you know explicit video on just fixture factory. If you haven't watched that, you need to watch that so that. You can understand what I'm really doing here. Again, if you if you don't have time to it, maybe I'll give a little brief on that in this particular video. But for a, for a very detailed information, you should definitely watch it. I'll leave the link in the description. Don't worry about that. So let's get started without wasting much time. And in in the previous video, also we have mentioned like you know uh, we were automating this particular website and we want to navigate to the users page and inside the users page you want to click on add button and we have to find the elements for this and that's where i left in the previous video so what i have done in the meantime is i have created the page components uh, basically this is the you know the component that we have the add user component and uh, this component will have all these six fields we have six fields here and maybe the save button i haven't added but yeah other six fields are here and each fields has its own a uh, page method that basically accepts what's the value that it want to enter and then does this for example this user role drop down uh, takes in what is the parameter that we want to select in the drop down and this is a wrapper method that is coming from our uh, page action helper and if you notice this select select method is very clean so i have used by locator as a parameter and the consumer of select right select class so this makes my code very very clean if you have been also watched my java 8 playlist i highly recommend to watch that because this particular code uh, takes away lost a lot of noise like whether i want to select by visible text whether i want to select by value or whether i want to select by index so there are a lot of options if i have to write a if conditions for of them my code will be very big and it is not really uh, neat so what i have done i have used consumer so that the the caller here gets the liberty to select what is the method they want to use for example if you pass me a web element and i'm going to use select by visible text to select it tomorrow you want to use select by value you come here and change it and it takes everything on its own so this as simple as that this is a much neater way of implementing your select drop down selection and but apart from that we have simple text boxes where you want to enter some values for example you want a employee name that can be fed into the employee box and these are all very simple wrapper methods that's going to wait and do the synkeys but for now i have not implemented the wait strategy yet because i have much neater way of implementing it in, in, instead of directly using the explicit wait i have much much neater way of doing this i'll come to that at a later point of time but this is all here so and then i have a method called as fill details which basically going to uh, call all these methods and you know do the things for us so for now uh, what i can do is basically i can call these methods one by one so return and if you notice to call these methods i need to pass these values right i need these values so how will i get these values maybe okay if i if i pass all these six values this method will have six parameters which is something that i don't like and that's when you can create a pojo for example i have created a package called as fixtures and add users because this is an add user test so i have given the test here and there is an entity that i have created so entity commonly refers to your pojo uh, or a bean class and here if you notice this is the user data so whatever the data that we are trying to enter in this website is basically users data so i have given the name as user data maybe you can also give it as user data users data so oh, i think singular makes more sense here uh, so i can leave it like this yeah so this is much neat okay so now this has uh, five fields because the confirm password and password will have same value so we don't have to really uh, manage this so there are five fields and i have created all these five fields here again guys for 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 drop downs like this you can also have an enum but for now i'm going with the simplest option of using strings so if i have admin it will select admin if i have enabled or disabled for the status drop down it will select them but all our all we need to do is we need to construct this and then we need to send it to the test method. So maybe I also use builder pattern here. If you are comfortable using builder, you can use it. Otherwise, you can also use all argument constructor, whatever you feel uh, you want. 
and let's go, go to the page, uh, the test class. And this is the test we have so far. And we need to pass this uh, test data to this test method, right? So I need add, uh, basically add use. So user data, right? User data, user data. And this will be feeded from my, uh, basically data provider, right? Let's name it as clear data, right? And we can also use this to create, yeah. And I'm, I'm, I started to use some library called as data supplier, uh, which is much more convenient for me. So I started to use this. Again, you can use conventional data provider as well. That's up to you. But yeah, this is a little more convenient for me. So what I can do also do here is I just need to return a stream of user data, right? I have a separate video on this. I'll also leave that in the description. So basically what I need to do is, I just need to construct the user data. Again, guys, the easier way is to do this, a new user data, uh, and then you pass all the five fields. For example, uh, the first one is admin, and then the second one is, yeah, this is admin, right? So you have to be very correct with your spelling here. And then we have employee name. I will do some employee name here. And then maybe this is an invalid employee name, but we are not bothered about it for now. And then I want to pass some username and then I want to pass uh, enabled or disabled. So I'll put enabled for now. And at the end, I want the password field. So, so for the password field, I'll enter some passwords again. Uh, one, two, okay. And this is going to give me a user, uh, user data. What I can do is I can just return stream dot off and then user data. So basically this is going to return me Let's say tomorrow I want to run the same test with a different set of test data. You can also do that. Okay. So maybe I'll uh, I'll zoom out a little bit so that you can all see this one go, right? So tomorrow, if you want to add one more values, I can just basically copy this, uh, paste this, and then this is user data one, and I can do user data one, right? So this is as simple as that. So, but for now, uh, let's not do it. Uh, so that it's much more uh, easy to understand, okay? But now I just need to pass this to user data, right? And let's go here and alter this to accept the user data. And here, what I can basically do is call each method set uh, user role dot drawn, and then I can pass user data dot get user role, right? And then we also have set uh, uh, username text box and use guys don't use map or all that because here there is no chance of you making a mistake but if you use map it's very hard to remember the key right so don't use map it's it's very unconventional and very hard to use okay and then after username i want to basically call set password uh, user data dot get password the same way set confirm password text box i also want to do get password for this and then I also have some of the fields. Uh, status drop down is uh, user data dot get status, right? And I, I think I have one, two, three, four, five. And I have one more field uh, which I am thinking now uh, is employee name, right? So the order doesn't matter, guys. Like you know. So yeah, for now I am entering all these fields. Maybe uh, we'll have some assertion, but at a point of time. But what we are trying to do is we're trying to have a good test data that can fill all these details. Let's go here and uh, let's try to run this and see uh, whether it is working. Okay, so basically we are we are setting this user data. Again, you can also use builder pattern here, uh, which will be more easy to understand what is this. But IntelliJ is giving you a hint of what if this is a user role, this is an employee name. But yeah, it's up to you. But if the number of fields are more, and you want to have some options, like you want to ignore certain fields, builder pattern is the best way to it, instead of having a telescopic concept as, right? Uh, so our test gets started and uh, it should basically launch the browser very soon. And also in the meantime, I'll open my form.xml file and show you, uh, so this is the, picture factory that I have added. This is the, this is the one that I'm going to use uh, to create the user data in the, you know, in the, in the, in the coming video. So 
So now this has launched the website and entered username and password. And and then yes, it started to enter all the fields and it was very, very quick. Again, guys, I'm giving some invalid values. So you don't expect them to not throw any errors. But yeah, these are all some invalid values. Uh, our focus is just on how to manage test data. And now we have managed our test data really well. So what else we can do here? The problem here is we are constructing this test data here and it is very expensive. Let's say I construct 100 uh, set values here. That's going to be very expensive piece of operation. And I am not sure whether this is a valid test data. Uh, let's say for some, value, some invalid values you want to test or uh, you want to change this value dynamically. Uh, you want to use faker library for generating some random values. So there are a lot of use cases. And if I put all these complex logic here, uh, that's that's going to be troublesome, right? So let's have this uh, complex logic of creating our uh, user data into a def def separate class. And that's what this fixture library helps us to do. So I have created a template package here and I have added add user template, okay? So this is a class that I have added and this basically implements template loader that is coming from our fixture factory. Again, guys, we are just going to do very simple things, okay? First, we are going to define a template based on which we are going to create this user data values. That's it. We are not going to uh, say like this. We are not going to feed all these value one by one. This is not going to be our goal. We are going to give a template and this class takes responsibility of creating the user data for us. Okay, that's how simple is it. So what I'm going to do here, uh, again, guys, I leave a link in the description so that you can watch the complete video uh, before you can. But the idea is, there is a load method which we are overriding and providing our implementation. So this is a fixture uh, class that is coming from the package and we are going to create user data dot class. Okay, we are adding a template. The template name is valid and it has certain rules on which it has been built. First, we have a property called as user role. Yes, we have a property uh, that is basically called as user role, right? And this particular user role is is random it's a random values it will pick any random values between ess and admin so that's right it will pick any one of these values we don't know what and that's what that's what we want to do right you want to pick any of these random values and employee name uh, is is unique random basically first time when you call it it will take this and second time when you call it it will use this again i want to also use some other name you can also add them so this is just an uh, string string or variable argument so you can pass as many as string values you want okay you can also uh, use a faker method faker library to generate some random values if you want and the username is basically going to be this and if you want more data sets you can add by adding a comma here and for status either you choose enabled or you choose disabled for password i'm using a hardcoded password password one, two, three now. So now if you say, hey, fixture, give me a template, give me one data from valid template, it'll give you, that's it. And if you say, hey, fixture, uh, I want just username, uh, all other fields I don't want here. So this is a very big uh, pojo. I don't want all this. I want to set, test an invalid scenarios where I want just one of these fields. And that's what it does. Just username is the template, right? This is a template. And this template is basically give, uh, you know, is basically give you, it will just have username and, and then this, and it won't have any other values. So that's how easy it is. Now we have templates on which we can create pojos. Now let's go to the class, uh, add user test. And instead of you doing all these complex logics, okay, what I'm going to do is, so we have something called as a uh, fixture uh, dot, from and user data cl class. So we have a fixture called as fixtures defined here. And what I'm going to do is give me, okay, how many labels you want, okay, give me uh, two, two quantities of value label, which means it will create two test data with this, okay. So it'll go here, it'll create two user data objects, and then it'll give it to us. 
So we can basically store it in list of user data. Okay. And then this is going to be very simple. You can pass this as a list as well. That's that's the power of, of using a data supplier. You can can return anything. You can return stream of values. You can use a list of values, anything. It can handle all of these on its own. Okay. Now this test is going to run two times and I don't want to waste my time. So I just want to do a run in parallel so that uh, run in parallel equals true. <clears throat> so these two values will be run in parallel. So let's try to run the test now. So this is how easy it is, guys. So you just define what you want. And I think I have made a mistake that I didn't initialize this. So let's, it won't work. So let's see. So for, for using the picture factory, you just need to load the templates, okay? Your code needs to know where this template is located, okay? So that it will load all these templates. So, so this is present in com.tmb.pictures.addusers, right? So you can go here and uh, before you start your test, public void setup and uh, and here I just do fixture factory loader or dot load templates and you need to mention where this thing is located as com dot tmb dot fixtures dot add users okay this is the package where my template is loaded so what it does is it goes and load all these templates into the memory and this is very important to do before running your test. So let's try to run it. Again, guys, these things are covered in detail in the Fiction Factory video. Okay, you can go and run that. And again, there is some issues. And uh, this is telling page option helper. Uh, so mm -hmm. there is some problem. Uh, okay, uh, let's. Uh, Close all these tabs and add user test. I'll go here. Uh, maybe I'll put a pause here. And let's try to uh, run in sequence. Let's see what's happening for. Okay, let me uh, try to fix this. Guys, it seems to be there is some problem with my Chrome browser and it's not getting launched. Maybe we will see that in the next session. But until then, uh, we have already learned about how effectively we can create our POJOs that can be passed to our test method. This is very, very important. Make sure that it is working for you. And also in our next session, we are going to handle different use cases. For example, we want to just pass only username and see what is the error message. You want to pass only, uh, let's say, uh, different different fields, right? Only employee name, and we want to see what is the error message. We want to pass only status, and we want to see what is the error message. These kind of scenarios are very very tricky to automate. Either you write multiple lines of code or multiple tests to handle this. How effectively we can solve all these things with Java, it seems, is going to be our next video. It's going to be very very fun and very interesting. See you guys in another great video. Until then, tada bye bye from Amazon. Bye guys.